So I want you to repeat after me. And God, and God showed up. I don't care what you're going through. I don't care what you face. I don't care what you're looking at. I don't care what problems are coming your way. And God showed up. Somebody say praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. As I was watching this, and I know some of you, I can't believe he played that in the church. He didn't cuss. You heard cussing because that's how your mind is. Right? But I saw something in this video that really stirred my heart up. Because how many know that we... Notice I started because I'm not leaving anybody out. We have been called and commissioned of God. And you can either get in the boat or you can hide from the boat. Come on. Nevertheless, as Paul said, people still need to share. <laughs> Amen. That's right. If you have your Bibles with you, please open up to the gospel. I'm sorry, to the book of Joshua, chapter 6. Joshua chapter 6. We're going to start reading in verse number 6. Give me a loud out there when you're there. Amen. I hope and pray that you all are with me. Tonight, Amen. I hope and pray that tonight rattles your cage. I hope and pray that tonight shakes you up a little bit. I hope and pray that tonight, tonight just gets and rocks you to the core. Are you with me? Amen. I hope and pray that everybody that walks from here, everybody that's watching, everybody that will watch later on, I hope that the Holy Ghost grips their inner being and shakes the comfortable right off. Oh, somebody. I hope and pray that the church will rise up. And as Lieutenant Dan said, you ain't sinking this boat. Come on. Oh, you can talk about me all you want. Oh, you can complain about me all you want. Come on. I'm in the army of the Lord.
building a patio? Yeah. All this for what? <clears throat> it says, take up the Ark of the Covenant. Now, the Ark of the Covenant was representative of God's presence. Wherever the Ark went, it was, it was representative in the Old Testament of God's of God's presence. And so it said, take up the, the Ark of the Covenant. Let seven priests bear seven trumpets. Right? Do you know that there are different kinds of trumpets? Yeah. Yeah. I know. Yeah, low, loud, fat, big, skinny. Right? Tall, short, with those, with those, right? Right? But he said, take seven trumpets of ram's horn. Are you with me? Now, how many would agree with me? Somebody help me out here, right? I don't know the difference between a ram and a sheep. And a... It's like there's a horn. Who's that? Okay. There's big horn sheep. Oh. There's hibiscus. What? Huh? Yeah, the ones with the curves. The ones with the spirals, right? There's all kinds of horns. Yeah. Yeah. But he said specifically. <laughs> now some of us, hello, I know some of you would have went and got a specific ramp, but some of us Come on. would grab what's there. That's right. Looks good enough to me. Right? <laughs> Spit all the dirt out. That's a dirty little ram horn, right? Now see if you tell me a Dodge Ram. Oh, oh and yeah. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> But he said, make sure that the seven priests have seven ram's horns. All right? He said, just bear with me. I'm, I'm going somewhere, okay? And then I want you to, to have the seven priests with the seven ram's horns go in front of the Ark of the Covenant. And he said to the people, proceed and march around the city. Amen? Amen. But those of you that are strapped, oh, see how quiet it got. Those of you that are strapped, you don't remember what strap means? <laughs> yeah. All of a sudden, everybody's like, I, I, you know, don't, don't, don't mention my name. <laughs> I asked one time back years ago, I said, I said, who's got a knife? My five of the brothers pulled out. <laughs> like that big old butterfly knife. <laughs> and one woman popped out with a switchblade. <laughs> Clack! And I was like, I was like, wow, I just keep that little pocket knife of mine. <laughs> <laughs> way down here. He said, those of you who are armed, you go in front of the ark. Are you with me? Verse number 8. So it was when Joshua had spoken to the people that the seven priests bearing the seven trumpets of Ram's horn before the Lord advanced and blow the trumpets and the ark of the covenant of the Lord followed after them. So in other words, da 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 da. Alright, let's go. Right? Because yeah. some of us have a hard time with instructions. Yeah. Right? So you got to da 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 on. Remember in school when they rang the bell and the bell? Yeah. Ring! And you're like, is that the first bell or the second bell? Is that the lunch bell? Or? And you watch everybody and go, oh, okay, well, we're all going in, so I'm going too. Man. <laughs> So it was, and so and so it was that Joshua had spoken to the people that the seven priests bearing the seven trumpets of ram's horn before the Lord advanced and blew the trumpets, and the ark of the covenant followed them. The armed men went before the priests who blew the trumpets, and the rear guard came after the ark while the priests continued blowing the trumpets. Are you with me? Man. Now Joshua had commanded the people, say nothing. Say, I'm sorry. Say, you shall not shout. You shall not make a noise with your voice, nor shall any word proceed out of your mouth. In other words, shut up. <laughs> shut up. I didn't say it. Right? He said, you people will say absolutely nothing. All you will hear. You know, some people can't be quiet to save their own necks. Some people, some people, it's like, it's like. I'll never forget. It. We went to a, we went to a family. A, a member had died, right? And there's a time, there's a time when you speak. Yeah. And that's a blessing. There's a time when you listen, and that's good too. But there's also a time to shut up. Yeah. Amen. And homeboy decided this 
was the time to preach a three-point sermon Come on. on hell. But we're looking at him like, oh, shut up. Amen? Nor shall a word proceed out of your mouth until the day, oh, here we go, until the day I say to you, shout, yeah. then you shall shout. So he had the ark of the Lord circle the city going around it once. And then they came into the camp and lodged in the camp. What that means is, okay, we're going to meet me tonight. <laughs> right? Are you with me? Man. Praise the Lord. Father, I pray for the next few minutes that you would help me to effectively speak to what you've laid in my heart. God, that you would stir hearts and stir lives. Lord, that we become an active part in our calling. Lord, that we not sit back. Lord, that we not kick back. That we not lay back. But Lord, that we take an active role in the calling upon our hearts, our families, and upon this ministry. We ask this in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. You know, the greatest battle that you will ever encounter is not home growth that beat you up. <laughs> All right? It is not it is not so and so from school that every time you see him, you're gonna take flight on him. No. The biggest battle you will face is you yourself. Right? Amen. Somebody say yes it is. Yes it is. Part of that big battle is the battle between who I was mm, come on. and who I am. Yes. Yeah. And more so in who God wants me to be. Yes. Are you with me? Amen. You see, some of us get stuck in who we were. Mm. Uh -oh. What are they? <laughs> Let me do the kickstand. What are they? <laughs> we get stuck in who we were. Yeah, when I was walking the yard. We know you walked the yard. Yeah, back in the hood. We know you were in the hood. All right? Yeah, when I went to high school, we don't know you went to high school. Yeah. <laughs> you don't display any fruits of high school. That's, that's you know the reason that that's a big battle? Because change is hard. Yeah, come on. Are you with me? Come on. Yeah. I got a letter from Adventist Health. Oh. Uh -oh. Adventist Health, if you're watching. <laughs> I got a letter from Adventist Health. It says, I enjoyed speaking with you about your health goals. I don't like my health goals. <laughs> he says, I, just as a general reminder, I wanted to remind you to um, test your blood sugar twice a day. Ooh. I like this woman actually wrote me a note to stick my fingers. <laughs> she says, I'm also reminding you one of your goals is not to eat after 6 o'clock. Oh, <laughs> I know she meant 6 a.m. So. <laughs> so another one of your goals is to exercise. Uh, yeah. I'll take two orders of extra fries. <laughs> right? And the, the worst part about it is she addressed it to my wife. <laughs> I'm like, why do you send that, that reminder to my wife? Oh, she don't need to see that stuff. Because it's hard when you're when you're trying to change. Yeah. Are you with me? We're so used to living life the way we lived it. Come on. Right? Watch this. Some of you I'm going to hit right, right, right. Some of you are going to be like, what's he talking about? You're driving down the street. Right? Driving down the street, you got the music on, you're just having a good old time, and here comes a cop. Mm -hmm. And you look in the rearview mirror, and he throws that big U-turn. Mm -hmm. And instinctively, you grab the seatbelt, click. <laughs> sit upright. Put down the phone. <laughs> if, like, if you're like some of us, you get that pocket knife out quick and throw it. <laughs> uh, put that red bull down and wipe my mouth. <laughs> it's part of it. Are you with me? Yeah. All right, let me try this way. You walk out to church right now and car backfires and Taco Bell driver. <laughs> Boom! <Okay. laughs> yeah, come on. Some people do this. What was that? The rest of us, yeah. we hit the floor and run back in. Some of you knuckleheads run to your trunk. Oh. <laughs> let's, let's, just, let's just drop that right there. But the hardest battle is, is between who I was who I want to be and where I'm going. Mm -hmm. One of our biggest our biggest
your stumbling blocks is, I've never done this before. Man. Right? I've never, I've never done this before. Amen? Amen. You know what the other, the other greatest obstacle is? What will people think of me? Come on. I'll never forget, you know, that back in the, back many years ago, they were like, you know, you go to church, and, and right away, boy, the guys would swarm. You know, it ain't, it ain't like that today. They would swarm on you. Brother, you want to go to the altar? It's like, oh, it's <laughs> Because that up there at the altar is where they make you weird. Mm. You go up to that altar, and then they take you in that little side room where they make you weird. And you come out wearing a plastic thing in your in your pocket with pencils and a big old bow tie and a, a Bible this big. Hi, my name's Steve. <laughs> I want to invite you to church. <laughs> Put your pants way up here. And I'll be like, no, I'm cool, dude. I'm cool. I, I don't, you know, right? Because of who we were. Man. Are you with me? Yes. We're afraid that God's going to require of us. Mm. Oh, I better move. One of the greatest obstacles in overcoming our past or overcoming who we were is, is what I think I already know. Mm. Come on. Come on. How many would agree with me when, when I say we're some educated people? Come on. Right? We ain't no fools. Come on. You lived out of your teenage years? Hello? <laughs> Nobody said you would survive past 16. That's right. Right? But yet here we are today. My my I remember I'll never forget a deputy told me one time I was gonna die of a bullet in an alley or an overdose. <laughs> huh. I showed him. Yeah. It's right. amazing what God can do. Amen. Are you with me? It's amazing what God can do. But the obstacle part is, I know everything. Mm, come on. There is nothing you can tell me because I know everything. Anybody got teenagers? God help you. Come on. God help you. If you have three teenagers, well. may the Holy Ghost get a hold of your heart. If you have pre-teens and teens that are girls, oh Lord have mercy. Vaya con Dios. Why? Because teenagers know everything. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Now I... Ready? Uh -oh. I, wasn't, I wasn't that big of a, of a I know everything. Okay? I was more like, I'm stupid. <laughs> I just want to hang out with the homies and have a good time and, and just, you know. But I wasn't dumb enough to go sleep in somebody's garage. That's right. Because uh, mom had food. Yeah. <laughs> right? And then and I had a nice bed at mom's house. I had flowered wallpaper in the room till my brother took over, but that's, that's <laughs> another story. <laughs> so how many know that one of the biggest obstacles to, to changing is I know. So. Come on. Somebody comes to tell you, brother, you shouldn't be doing that. I know. Mm. I know. Brother, if you try this, you know, God can really... Nah, I know. I know. Come on. Yeah. And nine times out of ten, guess what? You don't know. You know nothing. <laughs> you don't know nothing. <laughs> Lieutenant Dan told Forrest, if you become a shrimp boat captain, I will be your first mate. And Forrest got a boat. With a shrimp, was you know, was a shrimp boat captain, right? And so Lieutenant Dan shows up. Yeah. He says, I, I gave you my word that if you became a shrimp boat captain, that I would be your first mate. So here I am. So in the video we showed you, they're not catching nothing. Are you with me? All right, let's move on. Isaiah chapter 55, verse 8 says this, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, yeah. says the Lord. There is a way that seems right unto man, but its end is death and destruction. Hello? Everybody will tell you that when I took them back to my old neighborhood that I got lost. Don't you believe that for one minute? I didn't get lost in my old hood. Right? I did not get lost. I was taking them to show them the sights. The world that's it. Uh, but how many know? Our ways are not his ways. That's right. Because if it was my way, we would do X, Y, and Z. But God says it's not your way. Come on. It's his way. Amen. And how many would agree with me when I say his way works better yeah. than my way? That's right. Amen. 
All right. I want to talk to us tonight about when faith gets real. Mm. When faith gets real. Let, nowadays you hear keeping it 100. Oh. Right? Keeping it 100. How I many of you know that's the biggest lie I've ever heard in my life? You wouldn't know 100 if your life depended on me. I, mean, I keep it 100. I keep it real. You don't even know what real is. Come on. Yeah. Come on. I was looking at this woman. What? Yeah. I was looking at her eyes. Get out of here. Man, you guys. <laughs> she had eyelashes that were about this big. I'm not exaggerating. Yes, she got eyelashes that were like this big. And I'm looking at them, and she's talking. I'm looking at her eyes, and I'm like, how do those things not fall off? <laughs> I hear one word the woman said. So, but I had to ask to be sure. Hey, are those real? <laughs> I didn't ask her. And everybody looks at me, of course they're fake. <laughs> huh? Oh, wow. When faith gets real, action takes place. Amen? Amen. Lieutenant Dan and Forrest set out on a task. They were going to catch some shrimp, right? Now, you saw what they caught. They caught a, an army helmet. They caught a license plate and some other junk, right? They didn't catch no shrimp. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't show whether they emptied the helmet out, but there were no shrimp, right? And so... I love when uh, when Lieutenant Dan tells Forrest, he says, "Where's your gut at?" Or, mm. or, or, and I'm sorry, he says, "Well, so much for praying." And I love Forrest's response. He says, "Right then, God showed." Amen. Amen. Yeah. Are you with me? Yes. Lieutenant Dan, as I said, he gave his word, and, and he arrived to fulfill his word. Come heck or high water, I will live out the word that I speak. Are you with me? Come on. It's called integrity. I mean, know oh, the church and the world around us lacks integrity. Yeah. Wow. If you're, you let your yes be yes and your no be no. Right. If you say yes, I'm going to do it then. Come on. But nobody notices me. Oh. So what? God sees yeah. all. Yeah, that's right. God yeah. sees all. If you want me to reward you, I got a couple of uh, I got a couple of gift certificates for go. 31 flavors. Hey, I'll, I'll I'll gladly give them to you. I printed them this morning. Oh my God! <laughs> Don't mind that it says B O I D on it. That's just the direction so you can get there so they know you're VIP. <laughs> How many know that frustration can set in in no matter what we do? Amen. Right? So here's Forrest and Lieutenant Dan, and they're not catching no shrimp. And they're, they're, but they're paying for fuel, and they're doing, they're doing all, and they're throwing the nets, right? Some of you watch Deadliest Catch, right? Yeah. yeah. We're out there, they're out there setting the pots, and they're, they're, you know, on and on and on. And they're, they're doing what they're supposed to do. But how many know sometimes it's just, it just doesn't happen that way? Come on. Are you with me? So is the Christian walk. That's right. Well, I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. I go to church, and. The beautiful thing about church is we gather together, we receive instructions, we fellowship with one another. Hopefully we're a blessing to one another. But what do you do the rest of the week? Mm. Do you hang up the Christian suit oh. and go back to living the life like the streets or the, or the world? Or are you sold out for God 24-7? Mm. Wow. Amen. And so frustration sets in. But this is where prayer took over. Lieutenant Dan said, so much for praying, right? And for us right away, that's when God showed up. Mm, right. Come on. Well, how many know when you turn to God, your problems will kind of, oh, they might go away, but then again, God might use situations to create character. Yeah. Come on. Uh-oh. How many ever heard the expression, don't pray for patience? Oh, God. Because if you, if you pray for patience, you'll get trials. I got news for you. You won't get them anyway. Man, that's right. You don't care. You don't pack enough gear in heaven to decide what trials you're going to. I'll take this one, but not that one. Oh, come on. Somebody join me and say amen when I say, Lord, Lord, work on me. I, I'm a knucklehead, God. If you got to put me through this, put me through it. Man. But teach me through it. Amen. Hello. Yes. I was listening to some, 
Somebody was talking about, well, they talk about me at church. And I was like, and? And? He used to talk about you in the streets. What are you tripping on? Come on. They talk about you at work. You think you're captain's supervisor. You ain't high enough on the pay scale. Right? They talk about you in your neighborhood. They talk about you at the market. Come on. Who's that girl think she is wearing that clothes? <laughs> Girl, you are. Put something. Mm -hmm. Come on. How many of you have ever hit your head against the block wall? Amen. Many times. Did you move the wall? No. Yeah. When you hit it again, did you move the wall? No. Yeah. When you hit it again, did you move the wall? Yeah. I would venture to say that there's probably a couple of us knuckleheads in here who figured we would bust drywall. Huh? And we, bam, and we hit that drywall only to hit the stud. Oh. <laughs> uh, when you smack your head against the wall, there will be no results. Not in the wall. The results will be on your head. Come on. Amen? And hopefully you will learn that the wall ain't going to move. Right? But Jesus said sometimes they only come out by prayer and fasting. That's right. Lord, I want to change. I don't want to do what I do all the time. Lord, I'm tired of messing up. Come on. Tired of messing up. Sometimes these come out only by prayer and fasting. Man. Lord, will you please zap me? Right? Will you please zap me? My granddaughter got electrocuted. Um, she didn't get electrocuted like that. She got a good, a good shock. Yeah, she got a good zapping. And they're telling me, and I looked at her and I said, I said, do you want to go plug the plug in? <laughs> I said, do it again. And, I, and I'm, I'm playing with her and I'm telling her, ha, I got electrocuted. Yeah. I, I stuck a bobby pin right in there. She grabbed a phone charger that went out that bit. Are you with me? Some of us would learn from that. Come on. Some of us don't. <laughs> There's a black mark in the ceiling over there <laughs> to show that some of us don't learn. <laughs> Yeah, I got zapped at her house. I got turned off. I grabbed the things I I was shooting my big mouth off. I grabbed the, what I thought was a dead outlet. It was like, ha ha. And they heard me all the way around. You would think that we would learn. Hello. But we keep banging our head against that wall. Expecting the wall to give in. Lord, Lord, deal with my stubbornness. Lord, I want you to zap me so I won't be stubborn no more. Good luck with that one. Good luck with that one. No, what God reminds me is that sometimes they only come out by prayer and fasting. Amen? All right, let's move on here. Um, I'm, I like giving people things for free. So I'm giving you this for free. Are you ready? Come on. If you don't catch anything, catch this. Whatever you're asking God for, you better be ready. That's right. That's right. You better be ready. All right? You're asking God, Lord, save my son. Lord, save my daughter. Yes. Are you with me? Amen. And so when God gets a hold of their life and transforms their life, and they're like, Mom, you're staying home from church again? Ooh. You need to get up and go to church? You don't need to be And you're looking at them like, who are you? <laughs> be careful what you ask for. Come on, man. Be careful what you ask for. God, change my family. And when they get the Holy Ghost filled and they're out there, they're out there praising God and they want to get involved. Man. Right. Yeah, I got to take you to the church again? Come on. They want you to do what? <laughs> are you supposed to do all that? We're under quarantine. No, we're not. Come on. No, we're not. Come on. The quarantine's been lifted. Right? Amen. Amen. Lieutenant Dan is on the highest point of that ship. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Now, I don't know a whole lot about boats other than what I see. I walked on the Queen Mary, that's about it. <laughs> but I know that he was at the highest point of that ship. Yeah. You can't get any higher than Lieutenant Dan was. Are, are you with me? Yeah. And he's telling God and all the world around you. Yeah. Huh? That's right. He's telling them, it's time for us to do what we have come here to do. It's time for us to do what we've been called to do. You put us on this boat. You put us in this water. Let us do what you brought us here to do. Man. Are you with me? Yes. Jesus changed your life. Hello. You're not the same. And 
organize my sock drawer. Now I want to go home and do and do facials. No, no. I'm a terrible leader with facials. <laughs> now I want to go home and feed my goldfish. Oh. Yeah, my goldfish. You want to feed your goldfish? Bring them over here. Yeah. Got a turtle. Goldfish sandwiches. <laughs> You can't eat goldfish here, you can't watch. <laughs> I'll give him half and I'll eat the other half. I'm older, so he gets the tail. Oh. How many would agree with you? We've been called of God. Amen. We have been put in a place. I probably shouldn't say this, but what the heck. It's time to either or get off the planet. Oh my God. That's right. Amen. It's time to either lead, follow, or go sit down somewhere. I may know that we are in end times. Hello. Yeah. 